What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with a little commentary about Destiny 2 and today we're going to be talking about a couple of things that are going on with uh, poor old Bungie this week and I wanted to talk about something that I recently came across uh, today online that I wanted to discuss a little bit more in detail uh, and that is for a very interesting career post Bungie made on their website today regarding uh, a game design position with Destiny 2 or Destiny in general. <clears throat> so, actually what I wanted to start off with was, uh, you know, Bungie did drop the Curse of Osiris DLC this week. And while I'm not really um, playing Destiny 2 or taking a look at any of that, I've still been following some of the stuff going on with the game. And it just makes me kind of laugh seeing what they consider to be a quality $20 DLC release that's full of reskins, and it appears that they've brought back a whole bunch of exotics from the original Destiny. Uh, once again, Bungie just seems to fail any time they want to be creative with anything, and they just go back to what they know best, which is recycling old content, and they just do that over and over again. So, uh, if you're looking at unbiased, which I mean non-Destiny YouTuber for the most part, um, posts about the Curse of Osiris, it's largely being panned as very lackluster, and that it's not going to fix anything really that's wrong with the game right now. So, not a great DLC for them. It's not been a good week at Bungie in general. And then, of course, it came out that once again, when this DLC launched, they are locking players out of content that they originally paid for uh, with the game. <clears throat> Which is not surprising they did that with the original Destiny. It still sucks, and I still go back on the comments I made with the original Destiny was, I've just never seen a game with a company that's just so arrogant where they literally sell you something, and then three months down the road, they take it away from you. Like, you paid for this, and now you can't access it. I get the concept behind it. They want to raise you know, the light level or whatever and make those in-game activities harder for those people that buy the DLC, but it just still sucks that they take stuff away from you out of the game. I think back to World of Warcraft and the number of expansions that World of Warcraft went through. And, you know, Bungie is not an MMO, but it tries to emulate one. And I remember when, like, say, the Burning Legion... Um, came, or the Burning Crusade, I think DLC, it's been such a long time since I played WoW, but um, when it came out, it added all this new stuff into the game, but you could still play everything that you'd already paid for. Even if you didn't buy the expansion right away, I still had access to everything that I could play originally. Bungie is like the only company I've seen that just, they bring something out and it's like, oh, we're going to take away some of your content in order to encourage you to purchase this DLC that you may or may not even want to buy. So that wasn't a surprise, but still, it was kind of crappy. So, you know, Bungie's just having a really, <laughs> really rough week. You go back to the week before when they got exposed for throttling experience to earn bright engrams to encourage people to spend more money in the cash shop if they wanted cosmetics and other things. And they're having a really rough year so far. And I'm betting they're probably thinking they should have waited a couple months to release Destiny 2. And they made some more tweaks to it before the game actually came out. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video today is I wanted to talk about these, uh, this position that Bungie has on their career page for a senior progression designer on the live team. Uh, basically, it talks about uh, just the job ad post. It says, do you follow trends of gear, builds, and vanity items in MMOs? Do you understand the difference between too much and too little randomness and play rewards? Do you obsess about the rarity, cost, or challenge of acquisition of items in a virtual world? And then it, uh, or drive or fail to drive player behavior. Very interesting things here. And they want to know how all this stuff could be done better in Destiny, and they're looking for a senior progression designer. Now, I'm not going to go through all the stuff on here. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things, and it basically shows that Bungie is going to be relying quite heavily on Eververse and microtransactions and loot boxes in Destiny going forward. Uh, the one thing it does say on here, it says they want to create sustainable player progression and chase through the Bright Ingram system. Sustainable is the key word there. So they basically want to use that Bright Ingram system as something that drives player interest and keeps players playing the game, which does not sound good to me at all. It also says they want to work with Destiny 2 leadership to define a cohesive monetization experience across multiple expansions and seasons, which again leads me to believe we're going to be seeing Eververse and loot boxes throughout all of Destiny's existence. And that's not a great thing either, especially since it appears they want to 
you know move towards that model with their game now this on the on the surface may not seem so sinister or anything but it does show that they are very much focused on continuing to use these bright engrams and the cash shop and lock cosmetics behind um, this type of system but when you think about it a couple months ago this is kind of flown under the radar a lot of people have forgotten about it i think this is back in october a lot of this came out activision actually has gotten a patent for matchmaking that encourages players uh, to purchase microtransactions. And a couple people talked about this, but it largely, like I said, flew under the radar. And um, even I think Bungie came out and made a mention that it won't it wouldn't be in you know, it wasn't featured in Destiny, but that doesn't mean it won't be featured in Destiny at some point. It's apparently some kind of exploratory patent. And uh, what it does is if a player buys particular weapons they get matched in gameplay where that weapon is really, really good. So what happens is essentially you get all the noobs who have their low-level guns and haven't unlocked anything yet. It pairs them against the higher-level players or players who have bought the so-called pay-to-win weapons or have a really good gun that came out of a loot box. And they just get demolished over and over and over again. And they look and see what kind of weapons those players are using. And they say, oh, guess what? This guy's got this awesome gun that he got through the cash shop. I'm going to go to the cash shop and buy that weapon now. And so that's a system Activision has been investigating. If you patent something like that, um, it pretty much shows that you're very interested in, in sticking that into your game. And this is Activision we're talking about, who, of course, they're not very trustworthy to begin with. And obviously, they're behind a lot of the stuff Bungie's doing with... Destiny 2 and the original Destiny and you can see their fingerprints all over the game So when I saw this today about them looking for this new progression Person to work with the live team and they want to focus on Eververse and sustaining player progression through bright engrams It just it gave me a little bit of pause and I just thought it was very interesting Especially with all the other stuff that's going on with Destiny this week That it just doesn't appear the future is that great for this game but uh, that's kind of all I wanted to do, guys. Um, I'll post a link down below if you want to go check out the job post. Maybe apply for it. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, just very, very interesting. And it kind of shows the future direction they want to take this game. Uh, like I said, the most alarming thing is given what's come out with Activision in recent months about you know the patent they went for and how they could combine that. And they, they more than likely are going to stick that into Call of Duty somehow. Um, not sure if it would make it into Destiny, but you know, Bungie still likes to act like they have some control over what goes into this game. But they are pretty much, you know, Activision says jump and they ask how high. So it, it may or may not make it into this game, but I'd say the probability is probably pretty high up there. And the thing is, too, if they did put it into Destiny, given what's come out in the last couple of weeks, do you think they would actually tell you? Uh, you know, like with the experience throttling for bright engrams. You know, they try to do damage control, but the, pretty much the only reason they said anything about it was because they got caught with their pants down. Uh, it wasn't because they wanted to be nice and tell the community. It was because they got caught in a lie, uh, basically, and they got exposed. So they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. They've they've lied several times about things, you know, in Destiny and Destiny 2. And it wouldn't surprise me if they implemented this kind of system here. So, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I will see you again next time.